Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. In April this year, Australians heard of a remarkable decision taken by the Prime Minister and Science Minister that Australian taxpayers would have almost $1 billion of their hard-earned money tipped into an American company called PsiQuantum, which is supposedly going to build the world's first fault-tolerant error-corrected quantum computer in Brisbane. Since that time, the opposition has sought to hold this extraordinary bet with public money up to the scrutiny that it deserves, and the government has trenchantly resisted that scrutiny at every stage. Yesterday, the government was forced to release documents following an order for production of documents we initiated in the Senate. And as the Financial Review reports this morning, the chief scientist sent an email indicating that she was highly sceptical about PsiQuantum's ability to deliver on its promise to build a world-leading supercomputer in Australia. The documents uh, reveal, uh, revealed in the order for production only add to the many questions raised by this very curious decision. The Albanese Labor government has chosen to bet a very large amount of public money on one particular company pursuing one particular technology path within the broad field of quantum. A field in which people have been working for 20 or 30 year years cannot say with certainty which of the many paths being explored is likely to achieve a successful outcome. On any view, it will be at least several years and very possibly longer before the technology being developed by PsiQuantum is proven to work if it can be proven to do so at all. And we know that this followed a very poor process to get to this decision. The Albanese government agreed to assess an unsolicited proposal from Psi Quantum as early as November 2022. The Department of Industry, Science and Resources entered into a non-binding agreement with Psi Quantum in June 2023. Uh, and yet uh, the government points to an expression of interest process which commenced only in August of 2023, uh, an expression of interest process in which companies were invited to participate uh, with one email, one email only, no follow-up uh, telephone calls, no second email, uh, and those who were invited to participate were told they could not speak with Australian government officials. This was after, for more than eight months, Cy Quantum had been speaking with Australian government officials, up to and including the minister, who had visited their premises in California, who had met with them, met with them directly. We now know the terms of the expression of interest, because that is amongst what was revealed, which essentially asked respondents to match the promise made by Cy Quantum of building a fault-tolerant error-corrected quantum computer by 2030. Many in the sector are extremely sceptical that this can be done, but scepticism is not welcome in Minister Husick's regime. We know that Minister Husick has a particular interest in venture capital firm Blackbird. In October 2022, he appointed Claire Birch of Blackbird to the National Quantum Advisory Committee. In December 2022, he appointed Kate Glazebrook of Blackbird to the Industry Innovation and Science Australia Board. In May 2023, he launched the National Quantum Strategy with Nomad Atomics, a Blackbird-funded company. On 30 April this year, he announced the almost $1 billion in funding for Psi Quantum, a Blackbird-funded company. And Blackbird and the many other investors in this company, of course, greatly benefited. Uh, now, it is on the record that there is a close friendship between the Minister's senior adviser, Ellen Broad, and Blackbird's oh, Clayton Glazebrook. I have written to the Auditor-General requesting that the Australian National Audit Office undertake an investigation into the Australian Government's in investment in Psi Quantum, and the Auditor-General has responded that a potential investigation is being considered. But, Mr Speaker, uh, Deputy Speaker, this decision raises many questions, which is why I've called on the Auditor General to investigate. Why was the much trumpeted national interest framework, which we've heard about a lot, not used in arriving at this decision? When did the government reach its decision to make this investment? How did the government assess Psi Quantum's claims, including but not limited to Psi Quantum's technology being able to deliver at scale? in the time frame that Psi Quantum claimed. And let's remind Australians what the minister has promised. The minister, when this announcement was made, said uh, th this 
will bring us close to getting that fault-tolerant computer, which by most assessments is 2026-2027. So mark your calendars, uh, because if, to, to see whether the ministers uh, claim that we're going to get this technology, we're going to get this fault-tolerant, error-corrected computer by 2026-2027 uh, comes to fruition. Because when you speak to most people across the sector, there is deep scepticism that that is going to be achieved. Now, one of the obvious questions here is why is it that this government, if it wanted to invest money in quantum, and let's be clear, quantum is an important field, there's been bipartisan support for quantum and consistent funding of quantum uh, under both sides of politics. But curiously, quantum companies other than PsiQuantum, such as Silicon Quantum Computing from UNSW, Dirac from UNSW, Quantum Brilliance from the Australian National University, Q Control from Sydney University. All of these Australian companies were told by this government that there was no money for quantum. They were directed to the National Reconstruction Fund, which of course has not yet put out one dollar, uh, and they were told there was no program under which funding could be provided. Why is it that this government, if it was going to fund quantum at this massive scale, why did it not decide to establish and announce a program to fund investments in quantum companies with publicly announced guidelines, and why not invite any interested company to put forward an application to be assessed against the guidelines? Why was that good process not followed? Why did government officials advise companies other than PsyQuantum prior to the expression of interest that there was no dedicated funding? available for Australian companies? Why did the government have such extensive engagement with PsyQuantum prior to the EOI process? Why was this American company in the fast lane for engagement with this minister? Why was that opportunity not given to any Australian company? Why was the expression of interest conducted through the sending of a single email with no follow-up by the department to even ascertain whether the recipients of the email had seen it and opened it? Why were the companies which participated in the expression of interest process not given the same opportunities as PsyQuantum for direct engagement for discussion with Australian government officials and representatives up to and including the Minister for Industry and Science? Why were the companies which participated in the expression of interest process specifically directed as a term of participating that they could not directly approach nor, nor speak with Australian government officials. Uh, was the negative impact on Australian-based quantum com companies considered in, when the decision was taken to allocate funding to this American company? Uh, it is clear that the uh, message that the Australian government is sending to international investors is that, having assessed a range of companies, it's chosen not to invest in Australian-based companies. And that is a very curious decision to be taking, which is making it more difficult for Australian companies to go to the private markets and secure funding. Why was such weighting given to the requirement in the expression of interest to deliver the quantum computer at the earliest possible time? rather than considering a, waste, a weighted assessment of, assessment of factors like the amount of production in Australia, likelihood for the technology to be approved and other relevant factors. Isn't it the case that when you look at the expression of interest, as a number of those who participated uh, are reported to have expressed their concerns about, that it was written with a view to uh, giving the money to PsyQuantum because the decision had already been taken. This was nothing but a reverse engineered sham in which a minister who had been dazzled by the particular technology promises of one particular company took a decision that money was going to be spent, directed his department to reverse engineer a process to try and veneer, con con construct some kind of veneer of respectability. A deputy secretary who advised against this subsequently left the department after being on gardening leave for a considerable period of time. Export Finance Australia was directed to commence work 
on providing the funding even before the expression of interest had concluded. Uh, this was nothing but a sham, and as a consequence, Australian taxpayers have got almost a billion dollars of their money put at risk in what is a remarkably speculative venture.